Hi, good afternoon. Thank you for coming. Um, welcome to the side event on the Making It Work initiative, which is um, a initiative working to document and exchange good practices for CRPD implementation and inclusive development. My name is Rhonda Newhouse, and I'm the program manager for the Making It Work initiative. And I'm happy that you all joined us today. Um, this is a really exciting time for the Making It Work um, initiative. I'm not sure if any of you were here at our side event last year, but we were just uh, launching the Making It Work initiative at the COSP last year. Um, and we were able to talk about the initiative in general, but this year we have four projects to share with you today. From West Africa, a regional project across seven countries in West Africa. Guatemala, a, a DPO-led project um, in Guatemala. Saint, then Colombia, also a disability organization-led project in Colombia. And then another regional experience in the Middle East. Africa, Francesca Piada, Sylvia Kwan from Guatemala. Monica Cortez, who is the president of an, a DPO in Colombia, who is represented here by Catherine Naughton. Who, and then Daryl Barrett, from, um, to be able to share with you in more detail what's actually happening on the ground with regard to making it work. And a quote that I'd like to share, which sort of is the premise of what making it work is based on, is that the development and dissemination of good practices, lessons learned, and sources of expertise will assist all actors in the implementation of the convention on the rights of people, persons with disabilities at the local, national, and international levels. Um, and this quote basically uh, states what the Making It Work initiative is about. So what is making it work? Making it work, the main idea is to develop a common approach for generating knowledge about good practice for inclusive development and using this to influence change. Um, it's about documenting and sharing experiences of practitioners and people with disabilities that have actually worked. They may not be best practices, perfect, nothing's perfect, but good steps that are being taken um, that are working toward the goals of the convention and working toward inclusive development um, and, and working toward increased participation of people with disabilities in society. And really what we're trying to do is provide food for advocacy. Research, experience, documented experiences um, that will provide food for advocacy around the CRPD at all levels, at the country level as well as at the international level. Um, and really it's also to generate recommendations on what works and how practitioners can use it to change their practices as well as policymakers to work toward policy change. Um, and what we're what the making work approach is, is offering is really an approach on how the, the how do we do this? Because as we heard yesterday and we heard we hear a lot about is we need to use good practices and, and the, the UN disseminated a document um, yesterday with state good best practices. Um, but how do we do this and how do we identify and utilize these models of good practice? Um, because most countries don't have the mechanisms for analysis and consultation and dissemination of information on disability issues and therefore it's hard for policymakers and other civil society, civil society actors to shape policies and to make um, new decisions. And as you'll see from the numerous speakers who will speak today, it's an approach that can be adapted for any organization, for any type of institution, um, for many kinds of projects. And just to give you an idea that this, I, I work for Handicap International. However, as you'll see, at the, those on the panel are not all from HI, and these are all organizations and partners that are already participating within the Making It Work initiative. Um, many international disability and development organizations, CBM, Handicap International, um, and then there's DPOs, Riatis from Latin America, um, as well as numerous local organizations in Latin America, the Middle East, West Africa. Skip that. Um, so just to give you an idea of what a typical, the kinds of things that are part of a Making It Work project, and again, this can be flexible and modified based on the needs and the desires of the project, but one is that the projects adopt a multi-stakeholder approach, bringing in various organizations and individuals who are working on the thematic that's selected. And by the way, the, the topics can be on any topic under the convention. So 
education, employment, local inclusive governance like you'll hear today, transportation, you name it, the topic can be um, utilized for a making it work project. The second is documenting the good practices. The third is making recommendations based on these good practices and then producing some form of a publication. Could be a journal, a technical publication, a newsletter, um, and then using this. So we, we all know that we all have many reports sitting on our shelves, sitting on our desks that are beautiful reports but aren't always used and in the way that they can be. Making It Work is really trying to have this documentation but then use it for dissemination and advocacy. Um, and then there to talk about the impact. Surely there's an impact on the project level, those who are doing the project, those who are part of the, the project um, for self-advocacy, um, for change of whatever kind that we're seeking. There's also an impact on the organizational level, that it brings it back to HI, to CBM, to the DPOs, to the or at the organizational level for change and for impact. But what I want to focus in on here at the UN level is the collective impact, that we need to not be working in isolation, that working collaboratively and working together is how we're going to implement the convention. Um, and making it work offers a common approach to share the work that we're all doing, because all of you here, organizations all over the world, are doing good things. And it's a way to share information, facilitate South-to-South -South exchange, and to provide food for advocacy at both the national and international levels. Um, and then in a moment, I will show you the, briefly the Making It Work website, which is a platform for sharing this information. Information on the initiative, it has web pages on each of the projects, and we will continue to update them as they continue to uh, develop. It has information on advocacy, tools, resources. It has a, a guideline, which is a reference point for going through and, and thinking through how to develop a Making It Work project, as well as a toolkit, which has practical templates, guidelines, questionnaires, models, and it's constantly in development for each uh, step of the Making It Work um, approach. We also have information that's constantly updated on the CRPD, on inclusive development resources and materials as well. You can see there's, there's news, if you go to the top, you can see at the top there's about making it work, projects, toolkit, the information library which has information on the CRPD, on um, human rights information as well as inclusive development. And we do have the guidelines and some materials in Spanish, French, Serbian, Russian, and English, obviously. Actually the new version will be coming out uh, this fall. My contact information, you're welcome to contact me at any time to think through for more information or to think through how, to, how can you use the Making It Work approach to begin to share what you're already doing. Um, and I want to say we have other projects in development in the Ukraine, in uh, the Maghreb region, Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, as well as numerous others um, under development. The final uh, project that will be presented is from the Middle East. Um, it's called the Disability Monitor Initiative and we actually have two uh, presenters with regard to the, the DMI. Um, it's a project that's co-led by CBM, who is represented here by Catherine Naughton, who will speak first, and then Daryl Barrett from Handicap International, who will speak. So the, the project was launched and initially financed just by, by CBM and HI, although that's become more diverse. And in the steering committee from the beginning were HI, CBM, Arab Organization of Disabled Persons, the Lebanese Physical Handicapped Union, Al Hussein Society for the Habilitation and Rehabilitation of Physically Challenged, is based in Jordan, and the Bethlehem Arab Society for Rehabilitation. So the aim, the, the project is called Disability Monitor Initiative, but it follows the same kind of methodology as been described for making it work and has the same general principles. So the idea was to research, analyze, and develop, disseminate information and knowledge on relevant disability topics in the Middle East. So really uh, gathering and creating, researching to, make, to, to, to bring together new knowledge. Using that knowledge to support the empowerment of regional stakeholders. So like Rhonda mentioned at the beginning, giving food for advocacy. So there was very little material available for our partners to do advocacy with on certain topics. 
and then to stimulate policy change by showing good practice. And this is really just across the region of the Middle East, which we know is also very diverse in terms of the level of development and stability of different countries. But, but the partners felt that there was enough uh, similarities uh, within, the, within the, the whole configuration to make comparisons useful. So the actions are designed to change policy by showing good practice. And when we say policy, it's not just um, national level policy, but rather sometimes in the case of CBM, often it's to do with our partners and how they work. So they discover a lot about um, quality and accountability and change even policy at the level of these uh, service prov providing organizations. But also there is uh, a lot of work to, to influence policy at national or, or subnational levels. The field research has been carried out consulting with people with disability service providers, civil society and authorities. So to build up and share knowledge on the situation of persons with disabilities across these countries, good practices in terms of social innovation, and legislative and policy reforms. So I'm going to pass over to Daryl now, who's been very much involved with the, with the, the research aspects of the project to take you through more the, the methods and some of the, the outcomes of the work so far. Thank you. <coughs> Hello. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about uh, our methods because it's important um, in the making it work methodology to understand that there is a great deal of flexibility in the approach. You know, and the key things that, that Rhonda was talking about in terms of um, collection of good practices and documenting good practices and then using those. Um, documents for advocacy. It's, there's some key components, but certainly our methods were, um, were quite uh, unique <coughs> for our project. We originally were going to look at, um, at researching good practices around access to social services. And what was decided by the Regional Steering Committee was to, because it was a, a new project at a regional level, we wanted to give it some momentum, we wanted to, to really try and kick it out there. So we decided, well, the Steering Committee actually decided to have an award. So what that uh, really did was to uh, encourage service providers to, to open up their doors and to participate because there was some incentive for them to be involved in this project. And I think that's important because I, I'm not sure, I don't think the other the projects demonstrated that, but it certainly shows the flexibility in applying the methodology consistently but being a little bit uh, diverse in the approach. So we, um, we had research on good practices and we had also a series of national training sessions across the region where we introduced the topic of access to social services because it is a topic that is, um, uh, whilst it's not uh, difficult to understand, it's sometimes phrased in the terminology when you talk about things such as gatekeeping, for example, it doesn't translate very well into Arabic. So you need to really um, invest in national level training to make sure that the stakeholders that you're working with have a good understanding of, of um, the concepts that you, you want to share. And we produced um, a series of journals. We're about to produce another one on employment and livelihood, and they're all accessible on the website, uh, which there's a link on the Making It Work website. And there's a picture of um, the journal on uh, social protection <coughs> education. Uh, education. And that was the last one that was printed. As I said, we're about to produce one on um, uh, employment and livelihoods. We're also, uh, our current activity is taking the information from uh, the journals and from the report and the uh, legal review, which also have been done, and developing an e-learning platform. Because we realize that to, to make a greater impact in the region and, and further afield, is that it wasn't enough for us to, to have a dissemination on the website. We wanted to actually try and, um, and let people participate in the information. So we're, we're currently taking the information that is in uh, both this first report that was done, uh, which is soon to be put up on the DMI and Making It Work website, take the information from that report and also from uh, a legal review. This is across, I think it's about nine countries of the Middle East and it looks at legal text and it looks at um, enforcement and it looks at disability laws across the region. So. Both of those um, documents we are we are in the process of transforming into a, a, an e-learning platform so that we can hope to institute some distance, uh, distance training. The information that is in these documents and in the journals 
uh, the basis for a lot of the, the training and the information that is used in the curriculum for this self-advocate training. So it's a, it's a way to demonstrate, I guess, the, um, um, the use of sharing good practices um, beyond the production of, of these types of reports. Um, I'd like to open it up and we can maybe pass the mic around if there's any questions, comments um, from any of you. Uh, Richard Reza, United Kingdom uh, Disabled People's Council. Um, I think uh, you'll be congratulated on uh, creating this structure uh, and as your logo shows, the COGS are really a way of, of moving state parties by connecting the base to, to the government. And uh, I think anyone who sat through the, the last bit of the round table in there knows why this is necessary, because state parties, particularly when it's transferred to the permanent diplomatic missions in New York, have certain set speeches that they read out where they bear no relationship to the reality of disabled people's lives in their countries. And this, of course, is a good way of challenging that.